the Iraq War 2003 is still stuck in our minds. It's still so much controversy, controversy about the war and the war over the war still goes on. But I think the main lesson should be about the limitations of our power. We have to learn that even with all the best will in the world, even with the great resources, we cannot control everything and affect outcomes in the way that we see it. These are difficult lessons to learn, and I think it's the civilians who've got the most lessons to learn, because we really need to have coherent strategies, plans which are adequately resourced, and to be aware of the capabilities of our different instruments of power and what foreigners can do overseas. If we understand that better, then we'll be much more humble in thinking, what can we do? Should we intervene somewhere? Is it really in our national interests? And if so, how can we have, how can we be more rational, I suppose, more aware of unintended consequences and more thoughtful. We try and do far too much. We have to be much more modest. The factors that prevented a coherent strategy in Iraq were mostly internal to the US. So there wasn't an overall coherent strategy. There were very different opinions between civilians and military about what we should actually be doing. So at the beginning, there were some people who thought we should be doing long-term nation building. There were others who were very much against that, just wanted to overthrow Saddam and get out. And when you look back at, you know, it was nine, 10 year intervention in Iraq, it was only really in 2007, 2008 with the surge that we had a coherent strategy, that we had really good working between civilian and military leaders, that we used the right historical analogies, and that we had the necessary resources assigned to deliver that strategy. In the other years, there was always this mismatch, this lack of coherence people working at cross purposes, looking at the wrong analogy. So at the beginning it was looking at Germany as the analogy for Iraq, which is completely the wrong analogy. It would be much better to look at the British experience in Iraq in the 1920s to understand Iraq in its own context. When you look at Iraq, the key aspect, the key concern was it was a political dispute between different groups. We tend to frame things in terms of good guys and bad guys, but in these countries it's a struggle for power and resources between different groups. It requires a political solution. It's not about good guys, bad guys. That we tend to frame things in terms of good and evil, but it really is about this power struggle. So if you have a weak state, the power struggle turns violent. So it's not just about elections. It's not just elections which bring legitimacy. It's an agreement among elites. So when you look at Syria, the key factor that is missing is this agreement. There has to be agreement between the administration minus Assad, and between the opposition minus Jabhat al-Nusra, the Al-Qaeda-linked groups. Because if you don't have that agreement, then whatever regime you try and put in place, those excluded will try and bring it down, like they did in Iraq. And throughout our whole time in Iraq, even by the time we got to leave at the end of 2011, there still wasn't an agreement among the elites. <laughs> 